image is like this. Do you feel despair? You may have heard that over 90% of plastics are not recycled and still on the planet Earth today. And as long as they're sitting here, microplastics are gonna continue leaching out and we continue to suffer health problems like cancer. And we pass this on to our children. Do you wonder if there's a way that we could put this pile of junk back to work, back into a circular economy, and turn something like this into this? Back to reality. So a few years ago, after graduating with my PhD from Caltech, I started to work on this. And today, I think I might have found an answer to, re to recycle all plastics, this entire pile. And I'm here to share with you today. Since the late 80s, the popular thinking has become that we need to use less plastics. Let's see how we've done. Oh, oops, it grown 400%. It's a love-hate relationship. Plastics are obviously useful and they result in long-lasting and durable things. From the seat of your car to the wrapper of your granola bar, everywhere you look, you see plastic. And yet, the more we produce, the less the percentage seems to get recycled. Why is that? And what actually happens to our blue bin stuff. This is a MRF, a material recycling facility, where we try to sort things out. Metals and papers and cardboards are all sorted out at very high rates, over 90% at some parts of the world. As for plastic, 18. In most cases, only type one plastic bottles and type two, mostly milk jugs, are picked out. And everything else, landfill. For example, This yogurt carton, type six, landfill. And this fruit bag, I think type four, landfill. And keep in mind, these are the stuff that actually made it to recycling plant. Together with the things that didn't, we have an overall recycling rate of less than 10%. Less than 10. Oh, what's worse, the landfill pile, we burn them. Every day, this landfill pile gets picked up and burned by the truckloads in the incinerator of cement and power plants. In fact, we burn more plastic than we recycle. In the US, for every one piece plastic, we burn about two. And this is the reason why 90% of plastic is not recycled. They don't sell. The only ones that have scrap value is some type one and two. And the rest doesn't have a market. It's because the way we try to sort them out and make them into pure resins again. But the resins we make end up not good enough or safe enough to make into new products. So they, they have no scrap value. This sorting line of thinking came directly from metal and paper recycling, our, our metal and paper recycling experiences. For metals, we can sort them out based on their ferromagnetic properties um, or redox properties. For papers, uh, we can sort them out based on their densities and uh, as well as dissolving them in different chemicals. But none of these work for plastics and among different types, their physical properties are very similar to one another. This makes recycling plastic and physically picking them out very difficult and expensive. Oh, what's more, after physically picking them out, we still have to physically sort them out by removing additives. And the only reason we're able to recycle some type one and type two is because they contain only food grade additives and do not need to be removed. So, if sorting, it's so impossible, could there be a different approach? During graduate school, I helped my father with a family business, which made small machines to repair pavement. But it gave me some first-hand knowledge of road construction and the chemicals involved. Most roads are made of asphalt, which is basically crushed up rocks bonded together with something called asphalt binder. And asphalt binder come from crude oil. Did you know that plastic also come from crude oil? In the US alone, we need about 17 million tons of asphalt binder each year to make new roads. Meanwhile, 
we dump about 27 million tons of plastic in landfills. And if we could get a 70% yield, it's not too far-fetched that we could replace new oil used in road construction with plastic if we could develop the technology. And that was my idea. I wanted to develop a technology which turns mixed plastic to asphalt. Two years ago, I didn't know anything about plastic or asphalt. But after all these years of hard study, I feel like I finally have a good knowledge of cooking. Here's me in my fancy kitchen <laughs> with my fancy cookies. <laughs> so at first, we tried mechanical blending, but the plastic didn't mix well and cool to separate layers. As Edison said, I didn't fail, but I sure found many ways that didn't work. After some more research, I thought we should be breaking down the chemical bonds instead and rearrange them to our liking. After all, it's hard to bake a cake without cracking in the egg. And the way to crack the egg is by chemical methods, which uses a catalyst at an elevated temperature to break down the chains. As I was researching this chemical recycling approach, I realized that is not only very expensive, but also quite controversial. Uh, most of the, practically all of the chemical recyclers are breaking down plastic to make fuel, gasoline, diesel, jet fuel. I wonder why they're not producing useful feedstocks instead. And here's why. Turns out, to make pure chemicals from a mixed feed is very expensive and cannot compete with new oil. I realized we were different. Their goal is to create short and pure hydrocarbons to make into new plastic, but all resorted to producing hydrocarbon fuels. And my goal was after long chain hydrocarbons that's used in construction material. And their end result is hydrocarbon fuels that gets burned. And my end result is paved roads. That was a revelation for me. So we buckled down for the next couple of years and focus on research. And the new focus paid off. Eventually, we found that with the right sustainably produced bio-based catalyst, we're able to produce long hydrocarbons from mixed plastics with high compatibility with asphalt without producing CO2 emitting toxins. I got it here. The oil in this bottle does two things. One, it enables the recycling of old pavement by making the binder soft and sticky again. Two, when this binder is paved into a new road, it requires less heating. And less heating means less emissions on site. Compared to current practice, this catalyst-enabled recycled pavement reduces the carbon emission of paving by almost half. And if we make the catalyst from biosource, we can become carbon negative. Imagine, every time a road is built, we have less CO2 in the atmosphere. Every year, building roads produces 43 million tons of CO2. With that about, uh, amount of emissions, you can drive your Ford F-150 to Mars and back twice. So if we can achieve carbon negative roads, we'll wipe all that out and more. It's equivalent to, build, to planting 1.7 billion trees on Earth every year. And the best part, because we make it from waste and less processing, we're able to produce this product at a lower price and compared to new oil. So for my construction colleagues to switch to a green product, Instead of paying a green premium, they get a green discount. And as for this pile of junk, it becomes treasure in the new circular economy. The brown bar is the plastics going to landfill each year, and the red is incinerated. In the US, we pave enough roads to divert all landfill and incineration and turning them into longer lasting roads. And if we scale this up to the rest of the world, we can even start to clean up the ocean. Imagine all the roads in the world, instead of new oil, made with waste plastic. And the quest does not stop with just roads. 
we can also break down plastics to make waterproofing sealant for roofings and buildings and bring other carbon reduction materials to market. The construction sector contributes to nearly 50% of our entire emission count. 50%. Imagine wiping that out. The emissions consist of three things. Producing of raw materials, building practice, operations, and maintenance. I imagine a carbon zero construction industry. By replacing burning fossil with clean energy sources, and by making energy passive coatings and new insulation materials. And eventually, by allowing the waste products to go back to a circular economy. So instead of pushing bits and optimizing likes and shares, I hope more people, more smart people, will join me in this quest to make the construction sector the new frontier for innovation. And I hope that you share my optimism that science combined with entrepreneurial hard work will create green discounts in key sectors, which will power our mission to a clean and sustainable world. Thank you.